Hello everybody, welcome back to another Stock Indicators in Mathematics within Python video. Uh, where we left off, we were talking about Bollinger Bands, and in this video we're actually going to go ahead and calculate uh, the Bollinger Bands. So, as usual, we're going to need two imports. One is going to be import NumPy as MP, and the other one is going to be import time, so we can add a sleeper. Uh, we're going to need our sample data, and that's going to be equals open... Um, and if you don't have the sample data, well, let me just bebop over there. There is a link in the description for it, and well, at least there should be, anyways. Um, can't promise it until I actually make the video in the description. But uh, it's at syntax.com slash sample data dot text, so you can work with the exact same sample data that I'm using. Just do you know control A, control C, make a uh, notepad file called sample data dot text and you're good to go. Just make sure it's in the same directory as this file. Now, uh, anyway, so we're going to open sample data.txt, obviously with the intention to read. Also, if you have been following along my tutorial videos, it would behoove you to just save like this top part because it's all pretty much the same every time we program it. So you wouldn't have to do this every time. Um, next, to define that data, it's date close p high p low p open p volume equals np dot load text uh, what text do we want to load oops oh we didn't actually split this data <laughs> so let's do uh, split data equals sample data dot split and we need to split it by a new line As usual, guys, sorry, it is the morning. I do most of my videos in the morning while I'm drinking my coffee. doesn't really work out too well. Split data. So that's the stuff that we want to load. The delimiter is a comma. And finally, unpack equals true. So we can assign it to a bunch of variables like that. Now, uh, we did just do a standard deviation tutorial video. Um, so I'm going to just run through standard deviation. Uh, deviation, and either you can go watch that video, it is already here on YouTube, so you can watch it, or you can just type along with me if you can type pretty fast, um, but I'm not really going to explain too much. So standard deviation, SD, empty array, SD date, empty array, uh, X is time frame, while X is less than or equal to the length of prices what do we actually want to do well we're going to go array to consider equals prices and starting point is x minus tf and then ending point is x and let's make some space so we can continue writing this bad boy standard deviation equals array to consider dot std since standard deviation is indeed right here uh, with numpy and python now we want to do sd.append uh, stand dev and actually just so it's the same as everyone else's we did stand dev like that sd date dot append uh, date x and then don't forget your x plus equals one finally we return sd date sd and that's a standard deviation uh, function where we can just pass through some stuff so let's get to the Bollinger Bands now so, Bollinger Bands, pretty simple, define Bollinger Bands, and in here, we want to have our multiplier, so whatever we actually want, remember the x variable, where I say you can just choose anything, it's usually two, but we'll let you guys be able to be the masters of your universe, uh, and then TFF for time frame, and we just, I just added an F purely so it doesn't conflict with this, so, because we pass TF through this, and it, it would just be uh, best to not do that. So, next thing we want to do is, uh, just like everything, we have a B date. That's going to be an empty array. Top band, that's going to be an empty array. Bot band, and actually it's camel case uh, top band too. Top band. Bot band, empty array. Uh, mid band, again, empty array. X equals TFF. And then while x is less than length of date, what do we want to do? We're going to say the current simple moving average, because really we want to get that um, just that that 
current simple moving average point. We don't want the whole range of simple moving averages. We just need that, that one point because again, um, right, the calculation here was just that that points, simple moving average plus that points, standard deviation of price times whatever x is. So that's, um, we just want that one thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to call, uh, do we even have, we don't have moving average here, do we? No. Well, that's one we are definitely going to copy and paste. I don't feel like writing that out. Uh, let's go. The link for that will also be in the description because it's the starting point. So if you go either to my uh, website or you just click on the link in the description, just scroll down to moving average, and we're going to just copy and paste this function. So just hit copy and paste it over here. If you are going to, if you're planning to follow to the next video and actually graph this, uh, you might as well just copy and paste that entire code as well uh, for your uh, records since we're going to be there, or just stay on that page. So cur SMA back to work. Uh, is going to be equal to move an average, close P, and again we're going to have to use some fancy footwork, X minus, oops, X minus T, F, F, 2, X, uh, using the time frame we've chosen, and then we actually, see that creates an array, we want the negative first if element, which will give us the last element, and what did I forget? Hmm, why is it doing that to me? This it looks fine in, in my, in my, uh, my mind, this looks like a valid, uh, somewhere we have not closed off what we are supposed to close off, and this is it. Uh, we must have uh, copy and pasted over this, uh, so unpack equals true. You probably didn't do that. I remember typing out unpack equals true. Anyway, so that's why that was, the indent was throwing me off. Uh, again, we want the negative first fill. Okay, so. Uh, so that gives us the current simple moving average. Then we want to get the current standard deviation. So we're just going to say D just because it does return the date. But we really just care about per SD, right, which is the current standard deviation. And that's going to equal uh, standard deviation TFF close P. And just so we have enough data, we're just going to say 0 T. F, F, and then again we'll go cur SD uh, equals cur SD, um, uh, and again we want the negative first element there. Uh, now uh, we're going to say TB for top band equals oops, let me do this, cur SMA plus uh, cur as D times that multiplier, whatever the multiplier we set. BB, not to be confused with Bollinger Band, that's bottom band, equals cur SMA plus, actually, sorry, that's minus, my bad, cur SD times whatever that multiplier is. And then we're going to say capital D equals date X. Now we're going to append to all of these arrays that we've built up. So we've got top band, bottom band, mid band. I'm just going to go copy that, come down here, paste that, and do top band uh, dot append tb. Don't forget to, let's do a b date as well. I forgot that. b date dot append d. Bot band is dot append bb and mid band is dot append cur sma. Don't forget your x plus equals one, otherwise we will cry. Return b dates top band, uh, bot band, and finally mid band. Finally, let's say, hmm, yeah, that's good enough. So D, T, B, oops, D, T, B, 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 M, B equals Bollinger bands 2 and 20. And let's just for kicks uh, print them all out. Print D, print T, B, print B, B, print M, B. Uh, so save that. Don't know why I highlighted it. I must have fat fingered it. Now run it. See what happens.
as long as you didn't get any like nasty looking errors, you probably did all right. So the first value should be like 75,000 something or something. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, we're in date stamps still. We convert it later. So those are all of our date stamps, no surprise. Uh, the next thing we have is the top band followed by the bottom band. It should be about the same price as the stock. Looks like it is uh, since we were doing Starbucks. So top band, bottom band, middle band should all be around like 50 to 60s uh, since, again, it's Starbucks. Um, so it looks like we've done it right, and the easiest way to find out is to actually chart it up, and then you find out whether or not you uh, did it right. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next video is uh, taking this calculation here uh, putting it into matplotlib in our charting application and bring it up to see what we uh, if we did it right. So, as always, thanks for watching.